And welcome again. The new number one Netflix docuseries, Tiger King, is full of eccentric stories and characters. However, the criminal histories from the underworld of wild and exotic animal exhibitors are far more broad-reaching and serious. And the legal team at People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Peter, as we know it, is leading the charge against colourful criminal captive wildlife exploiters in the United States. Jeff Kerr is general counsel to Peter. His team pursued Joe Exotic. I couldn't believe that series when I saw it. And he rescued nearly 50 animals who were in his custody. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate you having me on. You're most welcome. You not only uh, do many exhibitors confine animals uh, in abusive conditions, Jeff, and treat them like uh, disposable commodities, but many also have criminal records. So what's being done to keep wild animals out of confinement by exhibitors with dangerous criminal histories, as well as the risk their enterprise, uh, you know, their enterprises pose to the public? Well, that, that's right, Mark. And um, certainly PETA's legal team uh, has been combating these kinds of roadside zoos and exploiters for decades. And uh, some of the most notorious uh, of those that PETA fights do have criminal histories, including charges of cruelty to animals, illegal possession of animals, racketeering, sexual misconduct, and consumer fraud. And so what we are doing is uh, several things, including litigation. We've got a series of lawsuits, federal lawsuits under the Federal Endangered Species Act uh, in different parts of the country fighting uh, to end the cruel big cat cub petting nationwide. Mm -hmm. And we just won a federal lawsuit in Florida that established that the premature separation of the tiger cubs from their mothers and using them in the encounters like you saw in Tiger King is a violation of the Endangered Species Act. Um, and we've also succeeded in getting the first of its kind preliminary injunction uh, against Tim Stark, who was featured in Tiger King um, in another Endangered Species Act case, prohibiting him from doing the separation and public encounters, but also prohibiting him from declawing these big cats, which is essentially cu it's cutting off their toes at the first joint, at the first knuckle, uh, which is horribly painful and cruel mm. and a violation of law. Um, we're also exposing the criminal histories of some of these roadside zoo exhibitors. For example, uh, a guy named Randy Stearns, who helped operate Dade City's Wild Things in Florida, is a registered sex offender mm -hmm. uh, who pled guilty to two counts of sexual misconduct in 2016 after exposing himself to two minors. Um, we worked, uh, we had a lawsuit uh, against uh, the Mobile Zoo in Alabama to free Joe, who was uh, a chimpanzee uh, in, in, uh, confined in isolation. We got him rescued to a proper sanctuary and as a result of our information the owner of the mobile zoo was later convicted of 14 counts Good Lord. of cruelty to animals and shut down um and and it, and it goes on it just and on. goes on and on i mean i've got a list here i think you yeah, rescued yeah. 73 bears uh 50 tigers and other big cats 12 primates from uh uh, lives of privation, including tigers, bears, chimpanzees, baboons from the roadside zoo. That's right. This one belonged to Joseph uh, Maldonado, the passage, uh, you know, Joe Exotic. And these animals are now thriving right. in reputable sanctuaries, right, which provide animals uh, right. with uh, lifelong homes in uh, naturalistic habitats. I think they'd feel a lot better, wouldn't they? Huh. That's exactly right. And, and, you know, of the animals that you just mentioned, 39 tigers, three bears, two chimpanzees, and two baboons came from Joe Exotic's facility, and, and, and they are in reputable sanctuaries. Um, and, um, you know, of course, Doc Antle, who was portrayed in Tiger King, he's got a long and dirty history of more than 75 federal animal welfare violations. Mm -hmm. um, Mario Tabrao uh, used his exotic animal business as a front for his, for his drug enterprises, narcotics Good Lord. trafficking enterprise in the 1980s. So yeah, it, it is a, it is truly a rogues gallery. And the most important thing people can do is just never go to one of these roadside zoos. Um, people can visit PETA.org. We've got all the information of the histories of these abusers that were in the show uh, and detailing how they suffer 
in ways that the series glossed over. Well, the disturbing histories of uh, notorious animal exhibitors, including uh, Ringling Brother Circus and uh, the criminal acts of key players from the Tiger King, uh, you know, including posing as a charity, operating without proper licenses to possess and operate a business uh, featuring exotic animals. And you're right, drug... uh, you know, drug smuggling and, and racketeering. Let me ask you a couple of questions here, Jeff. What animal issues do you feel went unexplored by the Tiger King docuseries? Well, certainly it didn't go nearly far enough in exploring the inherent cruelty in the roadside zoo and cub petting industry. For, for example, what you didn't see in Tiger King at the GW Zoo is behind the scenes with the ten, the rows of 10 foot by 10 foot cages where two, two big cats per cage are confined, um, pacing back and forth in these cells, uh, the stench of urine, mm. uh, and the, just the psychological and physical trauma being inflicted on these animals um, who are nothing more than a commodity and are effectively useless to them after uh, they've aged out of being able to be used in these in these cub petting, <clears throat> excuse me, cub petting and 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 selfie uh, and photo, photographs. Yeah. So um, j- just just the whole the whole history of that, and of course Joe, after his conviction, um, you know, in part for illegal trafficking endangered animals and killing five tigers in cold blood, uh, has been in touch with us. Um, my colleague Brittany Pete, who's who is in Tiger King, and he reports to us that Doc Antle, when Tiger comes, become useless to him, mm-hmm. uh, kill 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 the gases them, uh, and cremates them at, at a facility on his property. Nice. So this is some, this is some of the stuff that, that that's going on. Uh, you know, Jeff <laughs> Lowe, right, uh, in the show, uh, he's a convicted felon. He uh, was convicted. He pled guilty to felony mail fraud, proposing as domestic violence charity in 2008 in South Carolina, and his home in Las Vegas was raided in 2017 by authorities who seized two big cats in the lemur, uh, where he didn't have the required license uh, to have them. He was ordered to pay ten thousand dollars and uh, issued a stay out of trouble order, but he's violated that. And uh, his case is still pending, and next hearing is due in June. So, oh. you know, it just, it just goes on and on. Well, There's folks, I'm, uh, remotely, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm speaking with sorry. Jeff Kerr, at, if you've just joined us, because he's general counsel to PETA at its international affiliates for nearly 25 years now. And Jeff has built and leads the world's largest legal team working for animal rights. He's a good fellow. So, yep, circus exhibitors with criminal histories. Has Peter prevailed in any lawsuits uh, against these exhibitors of late? Absolutely. Um, like I said, we just won that case. It was against DC, uh, against Dade City's Wild Things or DCWT in Florida, uh, where for the first time uh, it established that the premature separation uh, and and use of these cubs in public encounters is a violation of federal law, um, and um, we, the other cases are are, are ongoing. Uh, we feel very confident about our ability to win our case against Tim Stark, um, and we've been instrumental in working with law enforcement and other regulators trying to get these facilities shut down. Uh, the Mobile Zoo I mentioned is shut down. Certainly, with you mentioned Ringling Brothers earlier. Uh, that's a facility that we got shut down after 35 years of yeah. protest and legal complaints. Well, that surprises me. I've got to uh, tell you. Had, yeah. 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 Well, and they had, in addition to the animal abuse they were inflicting with beatings with bull hooks and whipping tigers, uh, uh, they had contracts with people that were charged with a stabbing, muggings, sexual assault, and a bank robbery, to oh, name a few. Good Lord. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, it, it's it's so important for people to take away from Tiger King that it, these people are animal abusers. I I, um, I was just blown away even yeah. seeing the thing. I was surprised that it was even aired. But you know, now having seen it and then interviewing you and and reading some more research, unless they aired it, we a lot we've never would have known. You know, in a lot of cases. Yeah. 
So this That's helps right. you. This helps Peter That's greatly right. because, uh, you know, the public, uh, the public don't know. But anyway, um, look, other than the obvious, what is wrong with having animals in captivity? Well, quite simply, they don't belong there. These are natural, these are wild animals who belong in their natural environment. And there's nothing about conservation, despite the lies that, that these uh, abusers will tell you. There's nothing about conservation involved in, in the breeding of these tigers. They're, they're generic tigers. They couldn't possibly be released to the wild. Um, and so mm. uh, certainly the, the reputable sanctuaries that are out there, uh, like Carol Baskin's sanctuary that's portrayed in Tiger King, um, they are part of the solution, uh, and they are giving good lifelong homes for these animals. Um, but people need to know that they should only go to a facility that is uh, accredited by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries and never go to these roadside zoos. Right. Right, no, fair enough then. And the irony of it is, is that the the globe is being depleted of these beautiful animals anyway. You know, the last thing we should be doing is, is putting them in these darn cages because, they, as you say, they can't that's go back exact, to the wild. Exactly right. You know, it's unbelievable. That's exactly right. You know, it's so sad. You know, folks, that's if right. you'd like to know more, there's a lot to read on peter.org. That's still the exact website, isn't it, Jeff? The www.peta.org. Peter.org. Is that right. the best site? That, that is the best site, and if people can go there. They can donate to us to support our, our, our legal cases uh, and also find out all the, uh, all the sordid histories and backgrounds of the abusers in that series. Mm. I noticed your team was named Corporate Counsel Magazine's 2017 Best Legal Department. You had a high-profile cases, uh, the 13th Amendment case, Atilicum versus SeaWorld. That was a big one, wasn't it? Mark, thank you very much. You're most welcome, and good luck in the future.